Hello, this video is sponsored by Wondrium. I'm Lawrence Brown and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to words. Specifically, everyday American words that I use every day. I was in France recently and when you're in a foreign country you find yourself using the lingo in order to get by but it's usually the most simple basic everyday lingo like where's the nearest restaurant, how do I find the toilet, how do I call an ambulance, that sort of thing. And it got me thinking as a person who came to the United States from Britain I do the exact same thing here on a daily basis because I hear that lingo all the time, right? I live with a cat and a wife and one of them has a very strong American accent. Actually, so does my wife, come to think of it. You just pick up the words that they say and you say them back to them. It's as simple as that. So as I've been living here, I have picked up lingo that I use every day. And today I'm gonna to tell you all about 12 of them. Trash is the first one. Everybody's favorite activity, taking out the trash. And I do it, it's just become my activity. I don't mind it. It makes the place smell better and you just feel this sense of release at having removed some of the horrible, horrible smell. I'm not gonna get into too much detail on that, but I take out the trash. And in taking out the trash, you don't just do it as a kind of lonely activity. I mean, sometimes you mind, but you sort of converse with your wife. Wife, I'm taking out the trash. You know, so that she'll applaud. You know, job well done, husband. And you find yourself just using those words just because she does. Now, it's not to say that I don't occasionally internally say rubbish. Maybe if I haven't had enough coffee, I will say I'm taking out the rubbish. Or if I'm speaking to an English person, I revert back in that instance. And it's probably true with every one of these on this list. But trash, to me, is trash. There's no other way about it. Now, both countries, of course, use the word bathroom, but they use it quite differently. In the United Kingdom, where I used to live, we used to describe the place where you go to to have a bath because it has a bathtub in it as a bathroom. Whereas in the United States, that is not a requirement of that term. A bathroom is basically anywhere, public or private, that has a toilet in it. And nowadays, because I'm not such a fan of the word restroom, it just doesn't feel like I go in there to rest, I call it bathroom. But now that I think about it, I don't really go in there to bathe either because the only opportunity you get to bathe in a bathroom of this kind is either in the sink, because you can pour water into that, or in the toilet, you know, and I don't want to do that again, because there was a threat of deportation the first time, but I do, I call it bathroom. I don't know that I will ever revert back from that. Maybe if I move back to the United Kingdom until then, this one is not going to be flushed down the toilet or loo. It feels weird to go from the toilet to food. It's usually the other way around, but eggplant is something I've actually been growing and I grew to like this vegetable or whatever it is when I was a vegetarian. So I didn't eat it back home where we call it an aubergine. So I never really needed to say it that often, but here I needed to say it more. And I found myself saying the word eggplant more, and it's just a big part of my vocabulary now. So eggplant it is. I understand they use that same term in Canada and I think Australia. If there's anybody from Australia watching, let me know. But they are amazing. They're very nice. I do like them, but they're eggplants. I'll go back and forth with this one. When I'm talking to my wife, she might describe a, a number of things as a closet, the place where you store your clothes, or also just a basic cupboard where you're keeping things like light bulbs or towels or occasionally my cat when he's so inclined to jump in there. And I used to call that very thing a cupboard, just like the things in your kitchen. Over time since living here and hearing my wife refer to it as a closet, I've also done that too. I mean, that's just something I say every day. If she asks me, where did you put the Phillips head screwdriver this time? I put it in the closet. What, in the tool closet? No, accidentally the linen closet, my mistake, I'll find it. Baseball cap appropriately being worn by me in this very video. It's not that we don't have baseball caps in the UK, of course we do. They obviously originated in the United States, hence the term baseball cap. It's just that in the UK, of course, baseball isn't such a big thing. So a lot of the time we find ourselves not referring to it that way, but more as just the shorthand cap. I used to have one, a light water valley cap when I was nine years old. I was obsessed with the ultimate ride that went up and down and all that. It's made me sick into that cap. But since I moved here, I started calling it a baseball cap and I don't really know why. It's not like I'm massively into baseball. It's just that that's what everybody else calls it again. And all right, maybe I don't wear these every day, so I don't necessarily use the term every day. But most of the time, this is how I find myself using it. Tara, do you know where I put my baseball cap? I haven't seen it in five days. It's in the closet. 
So that's usually how that goes. Yeah, the British Post versus the US Mail, unless we're talking about the carriers, because in those instances, it's the Royal Mail and the US Postal Service. So it's all back to front, but on the whole, people in the US say mail. And I've come to do likewise, because while taking out the trash, I also check the mail, right? And I usually shout up the stairs, I'll get the mail on my way. I think in those instances, I know that there are just sort of other people that could be in earshot in this apartment complex. So if I said post, they'd either giggle because it's just adorable, right, in my British accent <laughs> with my dimples, or they'd think I'm weird. So I just try to keep it simple, right? I don't like to invite unwanted attention. And that accounts actually for the reason that I've acquired most of these words. Anybody who watches my shorts or half of the videos that I've ever done on this channel will know, of course, the history of the word soccer and how Americans came to use it by way of Britain. That's not what I'm talking about today. The fact remains that when I'm talking about the sport, which is pretty frequent, especially on Twitter, I tend to use the word soccer. And it's just because I know that my audience is primarily in North America. So why confuse matters? But again, a lot of this is context dependent. When I speak to people in Britain, I don't use the word soccer because I hope to one day be let back into the country. There isn't really any way to stop it from happening because most of the people I talk about the sport with here in the United States are in fact American. Here's a funny story. Just today, right here in Chicago, my wife and I were driving along and she said, oh, we actually need to get gas. And I said, well, where's the nearest gas station? And she said, oh, it's on Lawrence. Avenue here in Chicago. And I said, oh, it's not the only Lawrence that has gas today. <laughs> you had to be there. But gas is something that, of course, we have to do quite often in terms of filling it up. It's sort of just become an ingrained thing. If I'm a passenger in the car, I'm the one who has to fill up the gas tank at the gas station, even if we're at BP, which stands for, any guesses? British Petroleum, petrol. So I, even in those instances, find myself saying gas, and that's just the way it is. And while we're on the subject of American English, let's say a big howdy to these guys. In past videos, I introduced you to the Great Courses Plus. Well, the team behind those great courses are hard at work creating even better, broader, bigger, and more brilliant educational experiences giving you more reasons to love and pursue learning. Enter Wondrium, where you can find all of the tried and true Great Courses Plus content and more. For instance, have you ever wondered how English took on a life of its own in America? I'm thrilled to recommend Professor Natalie Schilling's English in America, A Linguistic History. This course even taught me a lot. Like, did you know that Noah Webster, the father of American English, wanted to replace the U in soup with a second O? Mind-blowing! Well, Wondrium is where you find the answer to everything you've ever wondered about and some things you never imagined you'd wonder about. Their carefully curated collection of short and long-form videos, tutorials, how-tos, travelogues, documentaries, and more is academically comprehensive thoroughly researched, relentlessly entertaining, and presented by engaging experts. In a nutshell, Wondrium is the place for minds that wonder, and as it happens, they're giving viewers the fantastic offer of a free trial. Show your support for Lost in the Pond by subscribing to Wondrium today. Visit wondrium.com slash lost in the pond right now to begin your free trial. The link is in my description below. Oh, thumbtacks. You might think it's weird that I say this every day, but you would be amazed at how much I pin onto boards. That's what happens when you're a YouTuber and you've got to come up with massive amounts of ideas. But the problem is I don't myself own any thumbtacks. They're all my wife's. And this is one where I don't think I've ever said, Tara, where are the drawing pins? I don't even know if she knows that term. It's just a term I used to use. I picked up thumbtacks from watching The Undertaker versus Mankind at King of the Ring 98. And since then, I've just known the term and always use it almost proudly, partly because of that event. I swear I held out for the longest time on the British equivalent of this word, which is flannel. If I wanted to wash my face or hands, or other body parts, I would have asked for a flannel or just found one, because that's what you do when you're in a bathroom, unless you're in a British hotel. That's something I found out while I was in Britain. They don't have them very often. After living here for a while, of course, it's just a, an everyday thing that you use. Sometimes if we're behind on laundry, we might also be behind on washcloths and then that uncomfortable conversation comes up and I smell horrendously. And I now say washcloth. Unless I'm in Britain, just ask any hotel manager. Cookie. Now this is quite a convoluted one because in the United States you do indeed use the word cookie 
to describe that breaded crumbly thing with sugar and chocolate chips. I'm not very good at describing things. And we call that a biscuit. But in the United States, a biscuit is something different, right? It's just sort of a bready, savory thing that you get at Red Lobster. But I think it's like this, right? If I'm having American cookies from, say, Chips Ahoy or something like that, then I'll refer to it as a cookie. It's an American brand. But if a fan of the channel, let's say Prince William Official, sends me a packet of digestives or boasters or whatever it might be, I will still use the term biscuits for that. It's just it's quite rare that I get those. He's very stingy. And I used to, more often than not, find myself eating American brands. Nowadays, I've given up added sugar, and I must say, in the last eight months this has not been such a problem and finally it was a word I used earlier apartment that's where I live that's where I am and because you spend every waking day of your life inside it at least I do I'm an introvert then you're gonna to refer to it quite often hi Prince William official yes just sitting at home in my apartment just eating a bowl of cabbage because when you give up sugar and alcohol that's really all that's left and I don't really remember the last time I used the word flat. Because even when I visited England recently and I was speaking to my family and they were asking me, oh, how's your new place and all of that? I don't think the word flat came up. And when I think about that, I just wonder if they think I've just become really American. Maybe I have. My uncle did tell me that he thought I've developed an American accent since being away. I mostly don't detect it, but I think it's turns of phrase that bring that out of me occasionally. And also words. So apartment and every other word that was mentioned on this list. Well, that was my list, and I doubt that it was it in its entirety, so there may well be a sequel in the works. I am Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at LostInThePondUS, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that I don't have to. A big thank you to my patrons, or as we say in America, patrons. <laughs> I just made that up, it's not real. If you would like to support Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lostinthepond. Until the next video, goodbye. Mm -hmm.